You're working on ways to reprogram specialized cells back into a more stem cell-like state. What do we still need to learn before scientists acquire a really thorough control of cell fates? Okay, I think in principle the, the, um, the conversion of somatic cells to a pluripotent state like the iPS cells works. So we know it works, but we don't know how it works. We don't know what the mechanism is. How do these four transcription factors, which are used to induce reprogramming, how do they really change the genome to from a somatic state to one which corresponds to a pluripotent embryonic state? I think there's lots of issues which have to be analyzed and learned, epigenetic um, um, remodeling of the genome, and so on and so forth. Um, and I think that will, I'm very confident, will learn a lot in the next few years. There's a great hope that these efforts will lead to ways to reprogram adult cells to have a therapeutic benefit, for example, to replace damaged tissues. What do you think are the biggest bottlenecks that remain before that's really practical? Yeah, indeed. The potential of this technology for therapy, I think, is really of great interest. Um, and I think one part of the problem, namely the reprogramming of a somatic cell which comes from a given patient. Um, that is, I think, is with the exception of technical issues resolved. So we can make these IPS cells which are patient specific, which could in principle be used to treat the patient. The problem is that for some of these differentiation protocols, we are not able to define which cell should be transplanted in the patient. Or we don't have the cells. So one example will be the blood system, the hematopoietic system, which offers itself as one of the most easy ways to treat a patient who suffers of sickle cell anemia or thalassemia, any of these um, diseases which are very severe. Um, because if you have the cells, you put them in the patient, the cells know where to go. They go to the bone marrow and they can, um, and they can uh, home to the bone marrow and indeed establish a new bone marrow system. That is all clinical routine. The problem is that we are not able now to generate from iPS cells or from ES cells hematopoietic stem cells which could engraft into the bone marrow of a patient. But the only thing we get so far are fetal cells which don't function. They don't engraft well. So I think the big problem is, and this is just one example, is to differentiate the cells, the undifferentiated iPS cells, to cells which are functional and which could be used in a transplantation setting to replace the damaged cells in the patient. You've been working abroad for many years now. Um, how does the German standing in this field look from the international point of view? Yeah, I think um, there's good research going on in Germany. In the stem cell field, I think it's, it's, it has certainly a um, it can, can hold the comparison, international comparison. I think there's one problem which I want to point out. And that's, I have quite a number of German postdocs who then finished, they were very successful, looked for jobs. None of them considered to go back to Germany. You can ask why. Why is that? Why is that? Well, I think Germany has a problem. If you want to work with stem cells, there are so many barriers, bureaucratic barriers, um, bureaucracy, which makes it really difficult to establish yourself here. So I think if I uh, think this is particularly, although funding and support, I think is very adequate, it's very good, maybe better than in many other countries, including the US. But the, um, the landscape of getting approval to work for certain human embryonic stem cells I think it's atrocious. It's an incredibly uh, cumbersome process which really hinders process and makes Germany not that attractive. So what presentations or topics at the MDC Stem Cell Conference have you found the most interesting or exciting? Well, I think there were quite a lot of really interesting um, um, and, and topics. So my personal uh, uh, answer to this would be I really liked the uh, presentation from um, Saito on the 
generation of functional spermatogonial stem cells from ES cells. I think that was clarified uh, unresolved issues which had been published before, which were not believable. I think he has beautiful work to show that. And of course also then the next talk of Azim Zorani to define the epigenetic state of germ cells, I think was really, um, I think very remarkable. Um, there were other highlights like the, uh, the talk from uh, Hans Klevers on, on uh, intestinal uh, stem cells and intestinal regeneration. I think it was very impressive work, and he gave uh, um, a talk at the first on the first evening. Um, these are three good examples, and uh, I could give you many more. When this conference is repeated in five or ten years down the road, do you think the issues that people will be talking about will still fundamentally be the same, or do you think, um, particularly in the area of therapeutic applications, we'll have made some significant progress? So I think, uh, looking five years ahead. Um, and to predict is always not that easy, I assume there will be enormous progress because this field is so, so much interest, there's so many good people working in it, so of course there will be a lot of progress. Will we have therapies then? That's another question. And I think one should not prematurely and inappropriately um, um, uh, sort of predict or promise a therapy that the therapies are around the corner. I do not think it is. So there are major issues to be resolved before uh, these cells can be injected to a patient. Um, some of them we discussed, uh, the differentiation of the cells, what is the right cell, um, can you put them in the right place, but also the, sa the safety. So can you assure that um, there are no um, tumor cells, no cancers arising as a consequence of, um, of the transplantation? I think that's another important issue which would be um, closely watched by the, uh, by the authorities, by the FDA, for example. So I don't think those issues will be resolved in five years.